This takes us to the heart of what we're about this evening. When music encounters the written or spoken word, music does have the habit of doing its own thing in its own way. It seems to want to declare its independence, or at least its distinctiveness, its own voice. Now, in the classical Greek tradition and the large part of the ancient world, it was widely thought that the melodies and rhythms of music should tie in with the rhythms of speech. Indeed, many considered this essential. And the same goes for early Christian chant. But since then, over and over again, we find music as it were wanting to spread its wings, display its own powers, like that colleague at work who seems to be getting more and more confident and having more and more influence. And this has made the marriage between music and language an uneasy one through history, a stormy marriage indeed, sometimes ending in divorce, and a marriage some would prefer not even to think about. The great songwriter Sammy Khan was once asked, when you're writing a song, which comes to you first, the music or the words? And he said, the check. <laughs> and the relationship has been especially uneasy between music and language in modernity and complex as well. Modernity has made us aware of the immense power of language. Ours has been a culture that has liked to believe that through language we can control the world. Language gives you power. According to the website, Doing the business, the right language is fundamental to business success. The principles of good language use include, he said, the following. State things in a way that makes them hard to argue with. State things in a way that makes you seem important and knowledgeable. Make sure that what you say can't come back to haunt you. Repeat what your boss said, but try to disguise it. Invent as many phrases for very good as possible. Use warm, fluffy words to fool employees into thinking they're happy and fulfilled. Exemplifying the maxim, master the language, you master the world. That's one side. Modernity has celebrated the immense power of language. But modernity has also been acutely aware of the limits of language, the things language cannot do, and especially when music turns up and seems to be able to do its own thing, and very well. In the church, this has often led to two damaging extremes. On the one hand, thinking words can and must do everything when it comes to matters divine, embodied in the pastor or rector, ensconced in his book-lined office, cursing all musicians under his breath for not paying more attention to his sermons. The other extreme, thinking that music grants us superlative access to God, giving us license to take leave of words altogether embodied in the organist who's got to the point of nipping out to Starbucks for a coffee during the sermon, or the worship leader who invites the congregation to, I quote, move into a time of worship, in other words, singing, because this, he believes, is where the sacramental magic happens and the Holy Spirit turns up. When the guitar strums and the keyboard hums and the microphone clinging backing group soars, God is indeed supremely present with his people. Presuming something's wrong with both extremes, how can we avoid them? 